Good evening, this is Sarah Lebrek and you are watching the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain TV. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Ghadibiyah Palace today several members of the royal family and senior state officials. His Royal Highness confirmed the trade sector is being supported by the government in order to activate the commercial movement, highlighting the importance of the private sector as an important element in economic growth. He said the current phase requires collaborative efforts so as to reinforce the national gains, stressing that unity and cohesion is the way towards achieving the progress and prosperity of the kingdom. The Prime Minister pointed out the importance of social communication amongst the different segments of the society as a characteristic of the people of Bahrain and their national identity and history. He also asserted the importance of preserving urban heritage of the kingdom, which proves the success of the people in the face of all challenges. His Royal Highness affirmed the government's interest in developing historic and cultural sites in Bahrain and to encourage creativity in the artistic, cultural and literary fields. The Prime Minister commended the cultural events being held in the kingdom to consolidate Bahrain's status as a pioneer in the fields of art and creativity, confirming the government's support to create the best environment for such fields to prosper. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Khadibiyya Palace today the participants of the first ministerial meeting of the Arab-India Cooperation Forum which is hosted by Bahrain. The Prime Minister called on Arab foreign ministers to enhance Arab cooperation in order to protect the interests of the nation and the people. He said that Arab political, economic and social integration is the way to overcome challenges and threats targeting the Arab nations, stressing the importance of activating Arab conventions and open permanent channels of communication in addition to resolving differences. His Royal Highness commended the Arab initiatives that reinforce joint cooperation and alliance, highlighting the initiatives of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia led by the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud, in leading Arab action towards further unity and cohesion and establishing an Arab power that protects its countries and people represented in leading the Arab coalition. He affirmed the importance of consolidating Arab cooperation based on mutual respect is a noble humanitarian value in order to provide a secure and peaceful environment that meets the demands of the people. He pointed out that the political, economic and security challenges that the world is facing require more comprehensive regional and international cooperation so as to guarantee a higher level of understanding and coordination. For their part, the forum's participants expressed thanks and appreciation to Bahrain for hosting the important event, which aims to enhance Arab-Indian cooperation in the fields of politics, economy and security. They also praised His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's keenness to reinforce Arab-Asian cooperation and hailed his vision to strengthen coordination to serve the best interests of the people.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received at Ghadibia Palace today, Minister of External Affairs and Overseas Indian Affairs of the Republic of India, Sushma Swaraj, is currently on an official visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain to head the delegation of her country, which is participating in the first ministerial meeting of the Arab India Cooperation Forum being held in Bahrain. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister confirmed the Kingdom's keenness to enhance Bahraini Indian joint cooperation in the economic and commercial fields to enhance joint investment. He outlined that both countries share the desire to consolidate commercial movement and increase exchanging official visits that serve political, economic and commercial relations. He noted India's ongoing development in various fields, highlighting the Indian experience in economic development, which inspires many countries that seek progress and prosperity. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister commended the Indian community's role in supporting Bahrain's development, confirming care and appreciation to them. He also expressed keenness to expand fields of cooperation between the two countries to achieve the best interests of both countries and their people. For her part, Minister Sawaraj conveyed to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister the greetings of the Indian President Pranab Mukherjee and Prime Minister Narendra Modi and their wishes for Bahrain and its people further progress and prosperity. She expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness for his keen interest to support joint cooperation and confirmed her country's keenness to expand fields of cooperation and achieve the best interests of both countries. Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa received in his office at Ghadibia Palace today the Iraqi Foreign Minister Dr. Ibrahim Al Jafari, who is currently in the kingdom to take part in the first ministerial meeting of the Arab India Cooperation Forum, which is hosted by Bahrain. Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak confirmed Bahrain's support to all efforts aiming to combat terrorism, which is threatening the region and the world, wishing Iraq further security, stability, progress, and prosperity. For his part, the Iraqi official confirmed his country country's keenness to reinforce Bahraini-Iraqi relations and joint cooperation. Minister of Foreign Affairs Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa opened today the first ministerial meeting of the Arab India Cooperation Forum with the participation of foreign ministers of Arab states, Minister of External Affairs and Overseas Indian Affairs and the Secretary General of the League of Arab States. The meeting discussed the historic and, civil and civilizational ties that exist between the Arab world and India and underlined the contribution of the commercial and cultural ties in binding the two sides together. They hailed the strong foundation, great potential and wide-ranging prospects for the Arab-Indian cooperation and the role this forum can play to advance Arab-India relations towards cap capacious horizons. They confirmed that their commitment to maintain international peace and security and to achieve sustainable development and express their commitment to work together to tackle political and economic challenges through closer consultation, cooperation and coordination in various fields. The meeting discussed the Palestinian-Israeli conflict, the situation in Syria and Libya, and they reaffirmed their commitment to the national unity, sovereignty, independence, stability and territorial integrity of Lebanon and Iraq. The meeting also affirmed full commitment to safeguard the unity and territorial integrity of Yemen and respect for its sovereignty and independence to reject interference in its internal affairs to stand by the Yemeni people and their aspirations for freedom, democracy and social justice. The meeting condemned the attacks against the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's embassy in Tehran and its consulate general in Mashhad in Iran, which resulted in entrenches in the 
diplomatic and consular premises, causing serious damage. The meeting also highlighted efforts to resolve conflicts in South Asia and expressed concern at the kidnapping of 39 Indian workers in Mosul in Iraq in June 2014 and three Indian workers in Sirti in Libya in June 2015. The Arab side expressed full solidarity with India in all efforts for their early release from captivity. The two sides discussed ways and means to enhance cooperation in economic, social and cultural fields and recognized the need to hold more people-to-people -people interactions between the two sides, particularly exchanging youth delegations to share experiences and ideas about each other's culture and traditions. They expressed desire to strengthen future cooperation in economic trade and investment within the framework of the existing mechanisms and further developing these mechanisms. The meeting expressed appreciation and gratitude to Bahrain for hosting the meeting and for the warm and gracious hospitality extended to all the delegations and for the good preparations which contributed to the success of this meeting. They also welcomed holding the second India-Arab ministerial meeting of the Forum in India. Wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, SCW, Her Royal Highness, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, deputized the Deputy Chairwoman of the SCW, Dr. Sheikha Maryam bint Hassan Al Khalifa, to attend the opening ceremony of the second Gulf Cooperation Council, the GCC Friendship Forum, for the Blind, organized by the Bahrain Friendship of the Blind Society. Dr. Sheikha Maryam expressed her appreciation for organizing the forum, which aims to develop the rehabilitation programs to the visually impaired people. She noted Bahrain's leadership constant support to care centers in order to provide the best services for the visually impaired people. The forum aims to exchange knowledge and expertise between participants through a number of workshops regarding visually impaired or visually impaired projects. Projects. The final day of the 2016 Bahrain International Air Show was dominated by news of deals relating to the Bahrain International Airport modernization and expansion project, including the appointment of the mega project's main contractors. Danielle Deporto brings us all the details in this report. Preparation works for the Bahrain International Airport Modernization and Expansion Project are already underway, ready for the newly appointed main contractors, a joint venture between the UAE's Arab Tech Construction and Turkey's TAV Construction, to commence works in the next couple of months. The approximately 1.1 billion US dollar project, funded by the GCC Development Fund and Bahrain's Ministry of Finance, will see the existing terminal building upgraded and a new terminal constructed, increasing the capacity of the airport to 14 to 16 million passengers annually and allowing it to handle larger and more aircraft. The project has been designed and phased so as to minimize disruption to airport services and the surrounding areas. While plans are still being finalized for the eventual facilities of the airport, such as the duty-free shops and a potential hotel, myriad other support contracts have gone out to tender and were recently awarded, with several agreements signed at the Bahrain International Airshow. The appointment of uh, Kony from Finland for the delivery of horizontal and vertical uh, transport system, as well as uh, CMIC from China for the uh, manufacture and supply of air bridges. We also have the appointment of L3 communication from the US for the security screening equipment and Vanderlande of Holland for the baggage handling system. Uh, on the airport side, which is a continuous initiative to upgrade the existing facilities at the airport, we also announced the appointment of CETA to supply self-check-in counters, uh, kiosks. We've also uh, announced the appointment of GBM to manufacture and supply a containerized data center. We have yesterday signed the a shareholders agreement to, join, uh, to form a joint venture with Noga Holding to design, construct and operate a new fuel tank farm at the airport, uh, as well as a contract with Al Muayyad Interiors for the refurbishment of the arrival concourse and the baggage uh, claim hall. The fast-tracked, upgraded airport is expected to come online by mid-2019. Meanwhile, the government is already looking ahead to creating a second international airport.
Once we uh, complete this project, we, you know, this project, this project will allow us to, as I said, we be, become future-proof for the next 20, 15 to 20 years. But uh, you know, when you plan for a country, you have to plan long term, and we have already identified an area uh, north of Bahrain, uh, and inshallah, we will start working on it immediately once we finish this project. Reporting for Bahrain Television, I'm Danielle Deporto. Here is Danielle with the latest business news. Thanks very much, Sarah. A very good evening. You're watching the business news here on Bahrain Television. Following the conclusion of the 2016 Bahrain International Air Show yesterday, organizers of the prestigious event confirmed that it was the most successful edition to date. By the close of business on day three, the total value of deals reached 9 billion US dollars, more than triple the figure of 2014. This includes aircraft orders for national carrier Gulf Air and a number of contracts to support Bahrain's airport modernization program. Participation was also at an all-time high, up by 60%, with more than 135 companies taking part in the event. The air show brought together 33 military delegations from 19 countries and 59 civil de delegations from 24 countries. It was also announced that BIAS 2018 will be moved to November, specifically from the 14th to 16th. The move is a result of the continued success of the, and growth of the air show and will see it more evenly spaced in the global calendar of major air shows. The Chief Executive Officer of Bahrain Bourse, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ibrahim Al Khalifa, issued today Resolution 1 of 2016 in respect of adopting the guidelines on the trading of Treasury bills or T-bills at the Bourse. Sheikh Khalifa said the T-bills market is one of the joint initiatives between the Central Bank of Bahrain and Bahrain Bourse aimed at offering investors more investment options. Trading in T-bills will be conducted from Sunday through Thursday and investors can submit their orders to brokers who will enter them in the T-bills market through the automated trading system that will match the buy and sell orders. The minimum accepted order in the T-bills market is 5,000 Bahraini dinars or its equivalent in the T-bill currency. Bahrain's All Shares Index closed at 1,158.03 points today, a decrease of 7.46 points below last week's closing level. The commercial banks, services and industrial sectors all dipped, although investors did trade mainly in the commercial bank sector at a rate of 35% of total share value traded. 24 equity transactions took place today, involving 510,000 shares, 510,016 shares rather, worth 56,793 Bahraini dinars.